to Vale. Um, just to start right start off by saying thanks to everybody that's uh, joining in with us today and it's going to have a wee play there with us about Scots and education. We've got a really busy hour ahead of us. I'm going to play there about um, how Scots features in the curriculum and how it's taught in schools. Um, Susie, um, your uh, thanks for joining me today and you're going to be telling us all about your writing and the work that you've done, the outreach work you've done for schools. Uh, and then later on, we're going to be joined by Rona Alcorn for Scottish Language Dictionaries, who's going to tell us all about an exciting new resource for learners. So, Susie, you're likely a real Kent face to a lot of folk that are interested in Scots uh, writing or Scots in schools. But would you, do you want to introduce yourself to today? Uh -huh. um, well, I, I wrote two books, uh, Nip Nebs and Nip Nebs in the Last Berry. Uh, that was shortlisted last year. No, that one was shortlisted last year. <laughs> I'm getting confused because I'm looking at my reflection. And this one is shortlisted this year for the Scots Language Awards. So we'll find out later what happens with them. But they they were written in Scots uh, and uh, they were beautifully illustrated by Ruthie Redden and published by Curly Tail Books. And it's quite a journey to even get a publisher to publish in Scots. Um, but my passion is just to encourage the Wains and let them understand that uh, Scots isn't just for tourist titles, uh, the, the words they speak, um, to empower them uh, to, to gain for it, just the way they talk and not have to be any other way, you know, just enjoy Aye, the language. Absolutely. And I think that's a similar opinion that's shared um, with a lot of enthusiastic teachers um, we'll talk a wee bit more about that in a minute, and I'm really interested to um, hear a, um, a wee bit later on all about the reactions that you've had to Nip Nebs and Nip Nebs in the last berry, because that all sounds uh, really exciting. Um, to think a wee bit, I know that you've been in schools, but just to explain to folk that um, what I do and, and how the way that I support schools um, is. I work for the Scots Language Centre. Um, I provide guidance and support to teachers that um, or parents that are wanting to learn or teach Scots. So, folk, the kind of folk that contact me might be a teacher in the early years sector or a primary teacher. There's maybe an enthusiastic parent that's trying to help their way and learn Scots, or even an adult learner um, whose mother tongue might be. Scottish Standard English, but it might be something else entirely. And uh, yeah. I'm sure that, t that teachers that um, are involved in teaching Scots uh, have had a similar experience, and I'm sure you've had experiences as well, Susie, as, as soon as you tell folk what you do, as soon as you tell folk that you're involved in working with Wains and working with teachers in schools, and that, uh, that involves promoting Scots, Folk just can't wait to tell you about their own experiences of yeah. learning Scots, whether that's been discouraged, encouraged, or maybe not even thought about. Uh, I know. Has that know. been your experience yeah. as well? Aye, I, I mean, just before even, uh, before, I've been, I've been, when I wrote, started writing in Scots for Wayne's, there was a lot of things building up to that moment um, where there was a lot of um, situations that were that were negatively looking at Scots. Like the the first story I ever wrote was um well, it wasn't the first story I ever wrote, it was the first year I sent away. And you've got to remember I went to school and I was brought up to read and write only in English. Mm. And so to write in any other language, even the one I, I spoke, was just weird. It was alien. So I just wrote in English. And um, I wrote the story called The Wee Sleepy Sheepy. And the only Scots word was the word wee. I sent that to publishers for years and kept getting rejected. Till one day, a publisher wrote back and said, we will publish your story if you omit the Scottish flavour. And that made me go, what Scottish <laughs> flavour? I'm not, that's my language. It's not a pot noodle seasoning. So... <laughs> I was I was I was a bit raging. I was I was pure raging about it, and uh, so I, I dramatically tore up. I wish I kept it. I, I tore up the rejection letter, 
And I thought, you know what, I'm going to, I don't care who sees my stories. I'm just going to write for myself and I'm going to try and write in, Sc- in Scots. And the first story I took to translate wasn't the wee sleepy sheepy, it was the last berry. And we, a really tiny little Scots dictionary that I had at the time, but I think it's there. I still got it for that wee dictionary. <laughs> for that wee dictionary that I'd got in a charity shop, I started just looking at the words I'd written in English and trying to translate them. And I discovered these bonny words for frost and winter and coldness and made me think of Jack Frost, which is called Nip Nebs because he nips your neb. Yeah, blows your mind there. And uh, there, must, there must be plenty of words in Scotland to describe being was, cold right enough. <laughs> Uh, well, the words like skinkle and prinkle and all, they were just so beautiful. So I wove them into a a, a poem, which uh, then became a book when Ruthie read it and it, well, heard it. I spoke it to her and she said, I don't understand it, but I'm going to paint it. So she she understands it now. <laughs> of course she does. Aye. Aye, fab. I, I think that's quite, um, I wonder if uh, folk that are watching the new would like to comment about their own experiences um, uh, when they were at school or their men's experiences and how it compares. Aye, it, would nice. it would be good to look at that, yeah. Aye, uh, because everybody's, I think folk have got similar stories. It, there seems to be two kind of camps. There's a uh, young campus folk that, uh, like, like yourself, became passionate about um, Scots because mm. somebody told them, said to them, didn't bother. <laughs> didn't bother Aye. writing in Scots, didn't bother speaking but, Scots. And then, and then there's another campy folk who were inspired by somebody that was really enthusiastic about the language. So there definitely does seem to be two distinct experiences that keep coming through and folk keep I was very to speak lucky. to me about. I, I was very lucky. My uh, head teacher was, uh, when I was at primary school, absolutely loved Scots language and he was uh, he did the World Burns Federation at the time he was head of our, our, our school and uh, Mr Ogilvy and uh, he encouraged us all to enjoy Scots and you know recite it and stuff you know it had a big impact on me so mm-hmm. I agree that's, that's uh, really interesting that that's uh, followed through into your adult life because I think that's what we're trying to do, aren't we? Um, everybody, anybody that's involved in the education is trying to encourage Wayne's to embark upon lifelong learning and to take any learning that happens at school into their adult life for them. Uh, so, but before I ask you a wee bit more about that, Susie, I'm just wanting to let folk ken about um, how Scots does feature in the curriculum now because uh, far from being ignored or being discouraged, at the minute it's actually actively encouraged by mm-hmm. um, by Education Scotland and it features in the curriculum um, as far as uh, it actually being an entitlement. Um, Education Scotland guide schools and advise schools now and uh, running what they cry one plus two languages, where every Wayne and every school across the country, uh, they, they're not just encouraged to learn uh, two further languages apart from their mother tongue. They're actually um, entitled, it's an entitlement for them to, to learn these. Um, so that's really interesting as far as that's concerned. And that follows Wayne through the broad general education, which is for S1, A, S3. But as well as that, I don't know, Ken, Susie, if you've heard of the Scots Language Award that's offered for the SQA. This, no, this is a, a, I'll be honest with you, no, I haven't. This is a qualification that um, learners can engage in in S4, S5, S6. And I think some of the teachers that are up for the Scots Teacher of the Year Award, I can, um, Jamie Fairbairn, who works in Banff Academy, certainly delivers this award to learners. But it's relatively new. Um, but it involves learners showing that they can uh, communicate in Scots, so they can either write Scots or, or, and or speak Scots, that they can read Scots and understand it, and also that they can a wee bit about the history, history of Scots. I, as it's uh, brilliant, and I, th- as I think that that's what really helps learners um, 
get their head in it and uh, it's a revelation for some of them the history Scots and looking at how it's developed alongside English rather than mm -hmm. developed a English which is quite a common misconception mm -hmm. uh, so I think Simon's got my um, Twitter details and my um, email address to put up on the screen because teachers can certainly get in touch with me they can also get in touch with uh, the Scots Language Coordinator at Education Scotland, Bruce Yunson, who was on earlier, um, and he's a Shetlander, and he was talking about the Shetland dialect. But there's also, apart from the folk you can get in touch with, there's hundreds of uh, good resources that are online, um, and some of them that you've been involved with, Susie. So I'll, I'll talk about that in a wee second. But the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, if Simon can help me, I'm going to share my screen to show folk the good resources that are out there. Okay. I'll just smile until it's been shared. <laughs> <laughs> Technology. There are all things happening. <laughs> Great, I can see that now. So um oh, yeah. Yeah. one of the so one of the resources that's been around for a few years now um and it's got really high quality materials on it and looks absolutely beautiful and I think it's up for Scots Project of the Year actually is for the National Library of Scotland and that's cried Wee Windies and that takes Hi. um it's taken Scots texts and digitized them and made them available for everybody there's also a learning cast involved in that uh, and this is one of the examples of the worksheets and again Susie if, you can, if you're familiar with you will be familiar with some of these words. Aye. Oh, the aye. That you do. aye. Uh -huh. So I thought oh, this please. was a, a, a good <laughs> one to share. This is for um, the resource, uh, the, the text called The Deal in Scotland. Um, and I thought this might be quite a appropriate yin to share for folks that might be interested in helping their veins mm -hmm. or their learners learn some of these words. Seems we've got Haline coming up. Yep, yep. Uh, another one uh, that I wanted to show focus on the Scots Language Centre website. This is uh, via a text called The Kist. And if you have been teaching for a long time, or maybe even uh, for some folk that are watching when you were at school yourself, you'll um, have seen this text. It was an anthology Scots text. There was a, a lot of poetry in it. And this, a few years ago, this was digitised and on the Education Scotland website, and that got uh, gifted to us, that got geared to us at the Scots Language Centre, and we put it on there. Um, yeah, I and be, I'm sure there'll be there. some difference. Aye, uh -huh, a Christmas poem, aye. Oh, There'll be a few, it will be a few old favourites here that'll be familiar to folk. You must have heard, uh, um, for example, Crocodile, have you heard of that in Susie? Aye, aye, I've heard the crocodile. I'm pretty sure the wings had it at school at one point. Aye, um, my, my own lady actually recited the crocodile at his school as well. So there's loads of familiar yins here. Um, one of my favourites is a dug a dug. Uh, mm -hmm. And they've all got audio resources with them as well. Because mm -hmm. um, it's okay. really important that we should be able to hear these as well as see them written down. Is that something that, that is you've important. experienced? That is important. Uh -huh. It's important for Wayne to hear it because no, every no every parent comes from Scotland, you know, and we need to be inclusive. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. to be inclusive, you need to be able to hear it and, it, you know, hear the melody of it, you know. Aye, I agree. And I think even if folk are from Scotland, doesn't necessarily mean that, that they've got that they're a Scots speaker. Um, oh, they're not confident. I've met so many Scots mm -hmm. speakers that aren't mm -hmm. confident. Uh, and and I remember I was doing an event and I um I was kind of running late and I said said to my friend Angie, Angie, I chucked them up and said, read them, read that to the Wayans and I'll take this this group around the trail and then come back. She's like, oh, I can I can I said, no, you can, you can. And she read it, and she read it absolutely beautifully because she is a Scots speaker and she's broad Scots. And she told me later, the teacher praised, praised her for it, the teacher of that class, the teacher praised her for it. And she she said to me, Susie, I always thought I spoke badly. 
And that I said, well, that's what we're trying to get rid of with this this conditioning that we speak badly, mm-hmm. that we're not speaking mm-hmm. properly. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the whole point. And Nip Neb and Nip Neb's in the last berry for me. Not only are there stories that are magical and are away from the stereotypes that we normally hear with Scots um, content, mm-hmm. but it, it I mean it wasn't deliberate. It was just kind of organic, and natural for me to do it that way. Um, mm-hmm. But it, I, I think that I think that's and, and, and given validity to the communication that you, because if this is the way you talk, you know that's valid and it's as beautiful as any other way of talking. So I that's it's a really interesting you know, story because because I think that some mm-hmm. folk think that to be um, what they what they cry or what they consider well spoken means that means speaking English. Uh, I, th- oh, I think I've there met, is still a bit so of a, a, a stigma about that and, and for some folk. <laughs> I once went into a library to see if my book was there, just to be nosy, and um, and I said it's in Scots language. And the woman replied, and I'm no lying, she says, it's Scots language, that's a dead language, is it? No. <laughs> 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 Uh, well, uh, well Misty, you, just, you just spoke it. It's like it was, it, it was quite interesting. Uh, did you did you watch uh, the program last night? The um, the Ali Heather was uh, talking about the word out with being a covert Scotticism. I thought that was quite interesting. It's like aye, shh, aye. Body, shh, I'm I wasn't aware covert. of that. <laughs> I'm not really Scot. <laughs> so uh, it's that kind of thing that. Um, that the folks say that when the folks say I don't speak Scots, do you use any Scots words? Nah, I say, do you use the word out with? And they go, uh huh. And I'm like, well, you're sorry, sorry, but <laughs> you're, you're a Scots speaker. Um, there's, there's another couple of <laughs> resources I wanted to talk about just to show folk quickly. And this one is mm-hmm. um, the Scots Language Centre and it's online and interactive games. And again, you helped us, um, Susie, with some of the audio for this. Because something that we were really keen to do at the Scots Language Centre was to represent different dialects and to hear speakers with different regional accents. So all the resources that we've got in here have got audio and where we've got um, variations of different dialects, for example, in our crosswords um, and in our word searches, we've got words for different dialects. We've um, tried our best to get a, a dialect speaker in there to do the audio for us. So you bid um, in Dumfries and Galloway, didn't you, Susie? Aye, aye. Aye. So that was aye. So that was the version that you did for us. And we've got some fun wee uh, games there for learners to use. I'll use this one because this is the most controversial one because it's either got a neat or a tumshe on it, <laughs> depending on the dialect <laughs> that you speak. I'm not getting involved in that argument. I know, Denny, Denny. But this has got, uh, so games that Wayne's are familiar with, like pairs, like word searches, that they can just, they uh-huh. can go on. They, I'd like to play that. <laughs> well, there we go, I got that right first time. I promise I didn't arrange that. <laughs> that was a good chance. Um, but it was just something we thought we wanted to, can kind of respond to this growing trend of uh, learning at home no longer being about um, necessarily being about somebody sitting beside their brain and writing on a jot or it's uh, you know a lot of the time this is uh, is moving to things that are online and interactive as well so, so I just want like, to make a like kind about that, that. Um, and something that I can that um, you've been involved in a lot is Another resource that I like to tell folk about cried Scots in schools. So are you right. able to tell us a bit about your involvement in this, Susie? Oh, I was absolutely delighted to be asked to... I was commissioned by Matthew Fit to write two new stories and the theme had to be about animals and uh, they were aimed at early years and Wayne's a wee bit older than that. So I wrote Yum for the early years and I wrote Wished for the older years and uh, I absolutely enjoyed it. The other task I had today was to film it. So um, my, my friend and filmmaker, Connor Bradley, filmed it. My son wrote the music for it because I wanted it to have a really nice professional finish. Um, 
uh, and so, so it was enjoyable to watch uh, and an enjoyable resource and it, it came out nice and the other task I had today was to get Gran into skills and get the Waynes to illustrate the story and the idea was right. to weave that in through the film however mm -hmm. dun, 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 Corona came in no. thank goodness mm -hmm. three days after we filmed that doors right. shut down everywhere we're not, mm. you're not allowed out that's it we were grounded Corona grounded mm -hmm. us all. So mm -hmm. I couldn't get into skills. The skills were all shut. So what I did was I set about a, a task and I, and I sent it out, not just on my own social medias, but on a local a, a nationwide sort of, you know, like a, sort of wee, wee sort of help pages, like for, you know, people cheering each other up, putting up little social isolation tips and, you know, that sort of thing. I was like, Aye. here's a wee task. Anybody wants this, I'll mm -hmm. send you, give me your email address. I'll send you the file of the stories and you can, you can sit at home and illustrate the pictures and send the pictures back to me and they might get put into a wee short film for this resource. And I got quite a lot back um, and ended up sending out more than just those stories. I sent out some of my own stories that weren't even published yet, like Ode to Igor. Um, and it was just, Oh, it was just lovely, and I don't know about everybody else, but for me personally, sitting at home and stuck indoors, nobody able to get out in the skills, it was lovely to have that engagement, albeit d digitally and distant. So we, uh, Connor, I sent him the pictures and he weaved it into the film. So maybe we could have a wee look at the Wayne's back and see how they've understood the story in Scots and have engaged with it. Aye, that's great. I think it's uh, really important that we get the, that that kind of, that you can see that your work in Scots is having that kind of impact, and it's great that it wasn't affected by the lockdown. I think Simon's maybe got a uh, is that the video that we've got to show, Susie? Uh huh. Aye. The means. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know if Simon's got it, but I know you had it on this this share screen a wee second ago. Mm -hmm. I've got yum, and I've got wished. Oh, yum! <laughs> we'll uh, we hear about uh, we'll be we here the yum story then, Susie. Is that your you you, you might let yeah, hear the yeah, day? Yeah, play play yum. It's for the nursery wings. Here I am at Mowbray in Dumfries, the National Centre for Children's Literature and Storytelling. Come away in and get nice and cosy. Sit by the fire, and I'll tell you a story. And the story is yum by Susie Briggs. It was a warm sunny day and wee Jenny went out to play. In the garden she had a lunch, a cheese and lettuce piece to munch. She was just about to drink her juice when up popped a hungry moose. Moose says, what's in your piece? Is that cheese? If it is, can I have some please? Jenny broke a bit off and gave her some. Moose nibbled and nibbled, yum, yum, yum. In the sky flew big black craw. She <laughs> landed on the garden wall. Craw says, oh, a piece, I love bread. Please can I hear a bit? That would be good. Jenny broke a bit off and made some crumbs. Craw pecked and pecked, yum, yum, yum. Dune on the grun, hairy ubit crawled by. He spied lettuce in the piece, then let out a sigh. He sighed, Oh, I love lettuce, tasty and green. Yon's the crispiest lettuce I've ever seen. Jenny tore a bit off and gave him some. Harry Ubit crunched and crunched. Yum, yum, yum. Jenny sat with her friends under the tree. All oh, were eating happily. It's good to go outside and play. It's good to share what you hae. It's good to fill up your tum. Nibble, peck, munch, crunch. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> that, that's lovely. Is that your, your moose you put there? <laughs> yeah, just because that was on, because um, I'm a storyteller, uh, Sometimes I like to take props with me. And so I'm trying to get this into the shot here. There he is. There's, this is wee moose. 
And what I've done is I've got a craw and I've got a hairy ubit as well. Um, but what I've done is I've made a cheese and lettuce piece out of fabric. And what you can do is you can tear a bit off. So here's a bit of the cheese. And you can tear a bit off. Yum, yum, yum. So when I get back to nurseries and scales again, I'll be taking this as part of my kit. Uh, it's easier for the Wains when they see something visual um, to learn things. Uh, and that's partly why I did. And also, I just like making things. <laughs> that's <laughs> lovely. I, th I think you're right. I think I've found um, whenever I've done a wee bit of outreach stuff with um, we, we Ians, we early years, it is all about that enga engagement into it. It's about making it fun for them. And uh, there was a time being a uh, uh, went, went and helped to at a book bug session at Stockbridge Library in Edinburgh. Um, and the librarian there is awfully enthusiastic about Scots and really keen to bring um, Scots to Stockbridge. And Stockbridge in Edinburgh uh, isn't an area where a lot of Scots has spoken. So we weren't very sure about the kind of reaction that we were going to get. And so we set up this uh, book bug session. You know, it was 10 o'clock on a Friday morning. We weren't very sure how many folk were going to come along, and uh, but it was great. The queue was at the door. We had um, lots of folk coming along that had no idea about any of the Scots words. We did Old MacDonald had a farm, using all the Scots words for the animals and all the puppets. Uh, but the, mm -hmm. the parents that came along genuinely had no, they didn't ken what a, a cuddy was. Um, they, no. they, they they kent the word uh, coo, um, but the Loads of these words were new to them, but they were absolutely on board and keen and wanting their reins to find out about Scots. Um, cause I, cause I think folk can sometimes be a bit nervous about the reaction that they'll get, uh, but certainly doing the outreach work that I do for Scots Language Centre, I've never had anything uh, but positive reactions for folk. What have you found when you've been out and about, Susie? How have folk reacted to your, your books most, and how most have folk, folk reacted to your outreach work? Most most folk are absolutely positive, like you say, and uh, they're they're amazed. You see, I I've stopped presenting it like a novelty. Um, mm -hmm. I'm now in my third year of promoting the books, but prior to that, I was uh, storytelling and and trying to add as much Scots as I could while I was performing a, a live story. Um, mm -hmm. But I always always kind of depended on the audience and and where I was uh, and what the vibe was. But I just present it as mainstream now. I don't I don't I used to present it like a novel, like oh, like, oh by the way, it's in Scots. I didn't do that now. I just go, that's my book. Aye. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, then go, Aye. and then they go, oh, it's in Scots. Uh -huh. uh, so I, I, I think it would be keeping it a novel. I think it would be uh, our uh, web developer that, work, that works at SLC, he keeps us up to date with how many hits the, the site's been getting and how many um, hits certain parts of the site have been getting. And that uh, mm -hmm. poem that I shared on the screen earlier, A Dug A Dug, that had mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of hits. And uh, in what month of the year, do you think? January. January, <laughs> January. So, uh, so I think for Let some, we take uh, Scots out the drawer. Well, we used to we used to take Scots <laughs> out the, the gate drawer where we, we would keep the gate cutlery and we'd take it out and we'd, we'd look at it and then put it back again and then you look at it again I, until I, November maybe. <laughs> well, I think uh, to to be fair, I, like that, I uh, taught myself for thirteen year and there's um, can I'm not thinking doing teachers because teachers have got a lot to fit into the curriculum. There's, you can, I'm banging on to them about Scots. Somebody else will be banging on to them about um, numeracy and money week. Somebody else will be banging, uh, will be talking about developing the young workforce. Can there's um, teachers are wall to wall busy, but I have to say, no. oh, aye. So in some cases, uh, you know, I, th I think for uh, my perspective, you know, if um, you, you do one thing and you can fit Scots in at that period, that is great. But I have to say that we've seen 
loads of good practice and inspiring practice in other schools. I noticed that um, Sam Best, who is a teacher at a school in Glasgow called Smithycroft Secondary School, that he's online. And um, I visited Smithycroft a couple of times and they're on the Scots Language Award. And certainly in that school, Scots isn't just for Burns Night. Scots is certainly for all year round there. And the Waynes are uh -huh. really enthusiastic about it. Uh, Ken, they can read and write in Scots. Um, a lot of the time they've got very insightful things to say about Scots and about the language. Um, and again, what I've found, as you say, it's when it's kind of embedded in the curriculum like that, it's not a novelty for folk. And folk kind of get away with that, get, get away from that idea that it's um, it's something different or it's something special. It's just part of their learning and it's just part, it's just part of the curriculum. And they, they did not question it. They just, they just accept it. It's really yeah, great to uh -huh. see. Uh, I... So, um, I can that you that Nick Nebs in the last berry is up for an award uh, the night. So best of luck with that. But I also can that you have got quite an exciting announcement to make today. I um there's a couple of things I want to say before I go. I want to say thank you to St Andrew's Primary School and Mrs Kerr, who are both up for awards the, the next. During lockdown, um, they approached me because I couldn't get to them for my usual author visit I was planning in April. They were all stuck at home and they made this beautiful video. You'll see it on Vimeo. Just click in uh -huh. St Andrew's Wayne's Nip Neb's Glossary. It's absolutely stunning and it was basically us backwards and forwards. But the the really cute thing about it was I was not allowed to see the Wayne's videos asking me questions. I was just to tell the description by Mrs. Kerr because Data Protection mm -hmm. Act, I couldn't see the film Aye. until it was finished. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was responding based on what Mrs. Kerr told me. And it became quite a pers personalised um, uh, expression and answer uh, in, in my part um, because of what Mrs. Kerr had done. And it became a lovely 25 minute piece of Scots language work based on nip nebs. I loved doing that. That was great. And they del also did the illustrations for Huffy the Heron, which was a commission for Nithraid Festival. I did just about a month ago. And right. the Hale Skeel got involved. They listened to my story that I sent via video. I've not met these Wayne's or this teacher yet. <laughs> <laughs> they said, they <laughs> took it all digitally. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 created these gorgeous pictures from nursery to P7. So you'll see that on the Nithraid Festival uh, website. So just Google Huffy the Heron. You'll you'll find that. Um, and how finally, exciting for them to get a how exciting for them to get a message for a real live author. That is something that they're real. I remember. <laughs> I'm just Susie. <laughs> I don't think I'm a celebrity <laughs> special. It's absolutely fine. Just Susie. I'm fine. Sit each clips to me. I'm all right. Um, so the the other thing I want to mention is do something really exciting. I don't know if Simon's got Drum it lined roll. up. Drrr, exclusive. <laughs> you ready? I should have a brand. I've got a brand. Like that. <laughs> um. So the exclusive is in November. Uh, uh, during um, Scottish Book Week. I don't know if I've got the words right. Really, run. Book Week Scotland. I think it is. Book Week up. Scotland. You're right. You're Book right. Week Scotland. Foo pelt or the puddles. <whistles> Mind, if you have seen him, you best wear warm clothes, or Nip Nebs will come and he'll prinkle your taste. There you go. That's a sneaky peek. That's what it's very atmospheric. <laughs> Eric, the music in time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, so that's lovely. That's great. Uh, so that's, that's going to be free for um, folk to download, is it? Yeah, I'll, um, free for schools to download. I'm not sure what we're doing with the general public yet. I don't know what we're going right. to do with that. But um, uh -huh. that, that, that was the main uh, goal in the end, was to make Aye. sure that education, it became an educational free resource. For the skills, so that they could, the teachers could download it and play it for the for the wains in the class, uh, so they could hear it and maybe do some activities around it. 
Uh, Aye, so. that's great. That's great. We've got this be able to make that accessible to everybody. That's bro. Thanks, thanks very much, Susie, for speaking to us about um, your writing and your working skills today. I have got uh, our next guest is waiting in the wings, I believe, Rona Alcorn for Scottish Language Dictionaries. Hi, Rona. Hello, hello. Hello, oh, how are you? Hi, Rona. I, hello, that was great, Susie. That I don't know who was doing the reading of the, the book, but uh, that was a fab voice. That was Gary Lewis from Outlander, or, or Billy Elliot's father. Uh, he's been in a lot of mm -hmm. things, so Scottish That was actor. terrific. So, uh, Rona, you. you've got a, I was just saying that this, that was Susie's exciting announcement about um, that resource becoming available to learners very soon, but you have got a similarly exciting announcement to make the day, have you not? Well, we do, we do indeed. Um, uh, so, we are... I should have... Sorry. I should have asked you to introduce yourself before I asked you to make that announcement. Oh. Sorry, that's me and my impatience, as per usual. That's <laughs> uh, yes, so I'm uh, Rona and I work at Scottish Language Dictionaries. Um, we're a, a wee Scottish charity that uh, has been running in one guise or another for a very long time, uh, making dictionaries of Scots. Um, and yes, our exciting news is that we are in the uh, the final stages of preparing a brand new version of our 25-year-old uh, Scots Dictionary for Schools. Um, we're publishing this new version as an app um, and it's going to be available to download from the app stores free of charge. Uh, on 25th January, so just in time for Burn Night. Yeah. That's fabulous. I kind of believe that, that this is the Scottish Dictionary for Schools. So the the hardcover, the paper dictionary uh, was, last, was published 25 years ago, is that right? right. 1996. That's so, so, yep. You would have just seen the baby yourself. Uh, when, I, when I was teaching, well, 1996 is when I sat my hires, <laughs> but uh, when I was teaching, <laughs> um, <laughs> when I was teaching um, in West Lothian, I mean, West Lothian um, have always been pro-Scots, uh, and in fact, they um, were good enough to, when I was teaching for West Lothian, to give me a, a development post, um, they, they funded a development post that made sure that I promote Scots across all the schools. But um, in our English department actually had a full class set of the Scots oh. Dictionaries for Schools. So, so we wow. were really useful. Um, but uh, it's interesting that you've released in an app form because of course that fits right in with what young youngs will expect uh, these days. Absolutely. So, so how did you come to the decision that it, it needed to be or, would, or it would be good for it to be updated? So it was actually first published in app format in 2015. So that was our first go into non-print um, dictionaries, mm -hmm. other than the big dictionary we've got on the uh, our own website. Um, and it's been really popular. So downloads of the app version far outstrip copies of the 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 print version, especially today. That's how, you know, the young generation, the Scots readers and writers and learners want to access reference resources. You want it on your phone Aye. or your iPad or your tablet, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. rather than having to get a book for the, the, the library, especially just now when you can't get access to a lot of resources, you know, because Aye. of lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, so our first go at the app uh, was an exciting venture for us, um, and although it's only what, four or five years old now, we're already aware that, um, firstly, the, the content is maybe not as closely attuned to the kind of Scots that are, is being encountered in the classroom. Um, so that's right. one thing we wanted to address. Um, and we're also aware, though, that the design of the first app um, 
is already a bit dated. These things move really, really quickly, uh, and expectations change almost by the almost by the week. So we thought, you know what, 25 years, it's a good time to to, to freshen this up, to get the content uh, more up to date, and also just to give a look and the feel of the app a bit more of a. a contemporary uh, makeover. Um, so that was the impetus for uh, giving it a, 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 a new version. I, so you're right, I think you're absolutely right. That's what folk have got high expectations, haven't they? Um, they expect everything to look professional, to look up to date. Um, so in terms of the, the in in terms of how it looks, it's going to look more up to date. Are there any changes going to be made to the content for the, for the original yes. app? Yes, so the app, the version, the, the original version, which is the version that you would download if you went to the app stores today, and the content is still from the 1996 uh, original print version of the dictionary. Um, so we've, we're bringing that up to date by drawing on three different sources. Uh, the first one is we've taken all the Scots vocabulary from the SQA's set text for the National Five and Higher English courses. So we've read through all the Scottish texts uh, for those courses, uh, extracted all the Scots vocabulary, and we've made sure that all those words are in, and phrases are included in the uh, the new dictionary. So that's that's important. That makes it you know very relevant Aye. to what the the second year school students at least are, are experiencing. Aye, I We've think also, the teachers all, and learners will really appreciate that for us to first start our side. Definitely. Yeah. Um, we've also, uh, and just as you were saying earlier to Susie uh, there, Laura, about how um, the, that poem, uh, the, the number of downloads just rockets in January because that's when, you know, that's when a lot of Scots is done in the classroom. Uh, so Aye. we've really beefed up our coverage of the vocabulary of Bum's poetry. Um, we've already got a fairly good coverage, but we've extended that even further um, because there's nothing worse than, you know, you're trying to uh, work with a particular uh, poem and there's some words there which, you know, I mean, Burns is not that long ago in the grand scheme of things, but already a lot of the words that he was using have fallen out of common use. Um, so they're mm -hmm. very... You know, they're unfamiliar, certainly, to today's youngsters, but often to today's parents and today's teachers. Um, so we've beefed up our coverage of uh, Scots vocabulary. Um, and then our third main source of new words is our own newly revised, concise Scots dictionary. So that pulls together a lot of new <laughs> words that uh, we've just found over the last, um, really since about 2005. The very one, I've got one there too. <laughs> so that came out in 2017 uh, and that, rep that contains um, all the new words that we'd come across since we'd published our last uh, um, a supplement in 2005. So we've got these three different sources all making the, 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 the school's dictionary much more relevant to what's happening in classrooms today. Aye, it sounds like it's going to be a really comprehensive resource. I'll tell you, something that's uh, really powerful actually going to do outreach work in schools is when I take the concise Scots dictionary out with me. It's a it's a hefty thing to log about with you if you're if you're going out and about to schools uh, and being <laughs> but uh, what I'll say to them is sometimes because sometimes folk didn't came at Scots has been to came at Scots has and they'll say, oh there's maybe and they'll say, oh, is Scots just like English with a couple of different words? And I'll say, well, there's this many different words. <laughs> there's only these and different, you what, different words in And here. I tell you what, Laura, that's a distillation of the <laughs> two big dictionaries, the Older Scottish Tongue and the Scottish National Dictionary. And between them, they amount to 22 volumes. So, you know... Don't tell me Scots isn't a language or there's only a few words Aye. in it, you know? Uh -huh. 
come and look mm. at this. Well, I'll, maybe, I'll maybe no log about the 22 volumes with me when I'm out in the boot and That's <laughs> fine with the good size. But there's one other part of our, our app that's uh, a, an important feature. Knowing what a word means, of course, is, is one thing, but knowing how to say it is another. Um, and for a lot of Scots words, it's not always obvious what the right pronunciation is. And where do you go? How do you find out how you're supposed to say it? Now, our print dictionary, the print app, uh, the print uh, Scots dictionary, um, had things like sounds like. Um, and that's a, you know, that's a helpful way in a lot of cases of giving clues to how a word should be pronounced. Um, but our new a dictionary that's coming out in January. We've recorded about 600 pronunciation guides um, for, the, we call it the harder words, the words that's what's easy to guess what the right pronunciation should be. Um, we've used professional uh, voiceover artists who recorded the, uh, their, their pronunciations in you know, professional studios, so that the quality yeah. is, is good. And we are appropriate, we've given, because of course, the way you say things in one part of Scotland is not necessarily the same way you would say it elsewhere. So in many cases, we've given yeah, absolutely. Different, yeah, absolutely. different regional uh, pronunciations, uh, just to give a sense of uh, the, the, the variety that you can encounter. Um, we also, there's about 600 audio pronunciation guides built into this new app. Um, and we also invited some Scotland youngsters to provide their own recordings uh, of some of these words. Um, and we had a, a really nice response from uh, some brilliant, brilliant uh, youngsters. I'll tell you about one in a second. Uh, and we plan to incorporate uh, uh, most of those recordings uh, as extras, you know, not instead of the professional recordings, but as a, an enhancement. Um, so that's a nice wee touch. The one that I'm thinking of, um, the wee girl uh, and her, uh, her gran wrote and asked, you know, could we maybe suggest some words that our granddaughter, who I think is eight, could pronounce? Um, so we gave a list of about 10 words and said any of these would be great. So the wee, the wee girl picked the word oxter. Um, and uh -huh. although we'd only asked for voice recordings to be submitted, uh, she actually submitted a, an audio-visual recording. So the wee lassie did a, you know, a, a wee selfie. It was a video. Uh, unfortunately, she'd lost her two blunt teeth. Oh, oh. She's trying to see the <laughs> side of the old stuff. It just <laughs> it didn't quite come out like of all the words mm. for us to choose. <laughs> uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, we weren't able to include that particular one, but we gave her a, a nice thank you anyway. <laughs> gold star for effort. <laughs> Absolutely. It's the taking part that counts. And um, what we've also done, Laura, is we've uh, we've, we've looked at the, the layout of the entries and the, the current app and we've tried to tidy things up so that they're a lot cleaner, a lot clearer, so it's easier to navigate, jump from one entry to another. We've included a facility where you can make a favourite, you know, where you can mark a word so that you can come mm -hmm. back to it. So if you see a word that you, you're interested in and you want to remember, you can just favourite it and then you can come back and a uh, check the, the word list that you've created. So we're just trying to make it a bit more um, uh, useful and uh, appealing. It sounds like it's going to be really accessible because some folk um, query what, whether the definitions or why the definitions are in English. Mm. Have yes. you had that um, question before? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and also, you know, for the, the dictionaries we make for uh, for adults as well. You know, so we're, we're defining words as Scots, but what language should we use to uh, provide those definitions? Uh, and the two most obvious uh, languages, of course, are uh, Scots itself or English. Um, in preparing this, uh, together this app, we did, we met with a number of teachers and they talked about what you know, mm -hmm. what, what they would find useful and what their experience uh, of their students uh, mm -hmm. uh, tells them about what would be useful. And what was pretty clear is that, you know, 
many of the, 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 uh, the secondary school students that are working towards their formal qualifications, they're encountering Scottish texts. We need to help with decoding the right. vocabulary mm -hmm. that they are encountering in those texts. Now, if we mm -hmm. if we simply recast it in other Scots words, we're kind right. of just getting into a circular problem here. So mm -hmm. we have decided to make the definition available in English. Um, that is not to say that there is not also room for a, a, a full Scots dictionary, one where the definitions are provided in Scots. Um, and, you know, one day that might be something we'll, we'll be able to uh, uh, provide. But for the moment, we're meeting the need that the teachers say exists in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And that means providing the definitions uh, in English. It's also not just for what's happening in the classrooms. I mean, we're already seeing, and there's going to be some of these titles uh, up for awards tonight, there is a great um, increase in the number of books that are coming out in Scots for, mm -hmm. uh, for kids, for young adults, for fully cooked adults. Um, and, you know, it's, it is fabulous to, to see these appearing in much greater numbers on the bookshelves. Many people need help with some of the words in there, um, and mm -hmm. having a Scots English dictionary is is you know, it, it's not it's not putting down the language, it's not diminishing it in any way. Quite the uh, uh, the reverse, I think it's making the language much more accessible. I I think you're definitely right, and that's a similar experience when we were putting together some resources for the Scots Language Centre. Um, something that we found out pretty quickly is that you can assume that even if somebody's lived in Scotland for a lot of years that they'll have Scots um, and as you say it's actually more effective and has more impact if folk can um, get if you can make it as accessible as possible for folk so this all sounds fab all I need to can now is when is it going to be available for schools and how are, have you, are you planning a kind of campaign to make sure that schools and teachers and pupils can about it? So it's going to be out on Burns now, uh, so 25th January. Um, I've got friends at Education Scotland who are going to help us spread the word directly into the classroom. Uh, Laura, you yourself, I know are uh, I very kindly agreed to help spread the word through the Scots Language Centre. What we hope to do is develop some uh, activity-based workshops, uh, worksheets that uh, teachers can use, or we hope teachers will use, that will encourage kids to pick up the app and to, to try it out and use it, but be it on Burns Day, be it, you know, in uh, other parts of the curriculum. Um, so we will put these together, make them freely available. Teachers can download them from our website uh, whenever they're convenient to, uh, to do so. Um, uh, we've also got our own social media channels, which will uh, push the message out that way as well. The good news is, though, it will be completely free of charge. That is fab. That is what we all like to hear, especially teachers. We all, we all like love a free resource. It's all that remains <laughs> then is for me to say thank you very much, Rona, for joining us today and telling us all about your news. And thank you to Susie as well. If I can just say uh, one more thing for a wee bit like the leaf uh, coming up with all got Halloween and we're not allowed to go around folks' doors at the minute. We're not allowed to go guising. So one thing I would want you to make everybody aware of before we finish up is the Scots Language Centre's Good Guising uh, campaign, where we're encouraging folk to go on social media, do your wee guising turn in Scots if you can, with the hashtag Good Guising. Oh. Uh, but thank you very much, Rona, and thank you very much, Susie. I'm sure we've got uh, loads of good resources that folk can log on to and log in eh? uh, and I'll see you soon. Thanks Laura and good luck to everybody tonight. Yep, yeah, bye bye. Bye Susie, bye. That was smashing. Cheers very much to Laura 